starting off a video at 5 p.m. today uh, because woke up and had a lot of issues getting video up. We're gonna work out, but we had to get here to San Antonio, so we drove from Houston to San Antonio today because this is where Heidi lives. And I haven't visited in about a month. So it's definitely my turn to come visit for a few days. So uh, we're currently here at her warehouse and she's catching up on some work with the team. And Nabil and I are about to go and stock up the fridge at the grocery store because we need to diet and we need to get shredded. Okay, welcome to the vlog. Okay, so here we are guys. I am currently outside of HEB, which is a grocery store with Nabil. And every single time we try to record at a grocery store, we end up having to stop recording or put our camera away or leave the store. So we're gonna see how far we can get with the GoPro. It's a lot smaller, it's a lot more subtle, right? Yeah. So subtle, bro. Yeah. You can't <laughs> even see it on me. So we're gonna go inside and I'm gonna show you guys like the, the basic essentials that I'm gonna pick up for about a four day stay here. Here we go. First, you got chugging up because I am so tired. It's a good angle. You can see where I am. You know the key to have a good YouTube channel, guys? You can't be ashamed. You can't be ashamed of looking like a fool. The girls are still working, but it's so funny because you can like tell there's such a difference in this warehouse versus the athlete warehouse. Athletes run by like guys, and this is just all girls, and there's so much more furniture. It's all color coordinated, it's organized, it's like pretty and welcoming. And they have like these ice cream pillows and donut pillows and stuff. So uh, we're gonna give you a quick tour of this warehouse. Go check it out. And then finish up and then go and load the groceries and go chill. You know what I noticed, man? <sighs> Starting last night, like the devil on my shoulder, this is the angel, this is the devil. He's been like, I know you're craving something. Go eat it. Screw summer shredding, screw your macros. Just go enjoy yourself. And like, we're a little over three weeks in, I'm starting to get those feelings a little bit, and they're only gonna get worse. But that temptation, the devil on my shoulder. And he's already here. <laughs> go away. Go away. And you go away. And <laughs> Current vibes. Feeling a little bit exhausted. Nabil is editing the video. I've been laying down there on my phone for like 10 minutes. And Heidi's making me some food. We've got some white rice, some ground turkey, and some fat-free cheese. I think the turkey is 96.4. Uh, the fat-free cheese is like about a serving, an extra nine grams of protein. And then this is the rice that I happened to use today. The jasmine one. I didn't know that she already had these before I went to the grocery store, the basmati. I tend to go for basmati because usually there are more carbs in the jasmine, fun fact. If you like compare the same sort of things, uh, there's about 84 carbs here, about 100 plus here, 104. So not the best choice if you're trying to like get good volume for your food. But at this point, I just want something kind of light. Um, and we're going to go to the gym in a little bit. So that's the whole thing. This looks so good. Don't ruin the meal, babe. <laughs> it's for aesthetic. And you need your micros, babe. Aesthetic. Aesthetic. Aesthetics. And I've also been snacking on some watermelon. Because my gross and deliciousness. Look how much better that looks when I do it. Wow. I literally feel like I'm glued to this thing right now. Today's supposed to be my off day, but I have a wedding on Saturday in Atlanta. Therefore, 
I'm not gonna be able to work out Saturday. I figured I would do it three more days in a row. So I'm gonna go today, like pull push leg, and I'll take Saturday off as my game plan. Instead of taking today off, I'm gonna train for two days and then take another day off. So I need to suck it up and get off this thing in like 15 minutes. In like 15 minutes? <laughs> Oh. oh no! Make some gross. Okay. No, what up? I'm, I only make what up. Good night. Okay, so as we wait for the valet to come and drop off the car, <laughs> uh, I figured I'd show you all these stringers real quick. If you've been watching the last few videos, I've been rocking one almost every video. We had this like light pastel blue, light yellow, uh, black, and we also have a light purple, kind of like a pastel sort of theme coming, and we haven't done strings in a very long time. We redid the sizing, made them a little bit more boxier versus our last ones are super tapered and a little too long. Uh, this is not washed yet, so it will shrink up a little bit because it's primarily made of cotton uh, with also a spandex. We put a tag with our word mark down here, the outfit word, and the only adjustment we're making on here is I feel like it's almost too wide right here, so we're actually gonna pinch about this much, much fabric, which will actually raise this like raise and also narrow this like chest hole if you want to call it that and once we do that we're actually going to raise up the logo half an inch this 3d black logo and it'll be a little bit higher for the finals but that'll be it so good <laughs> i see it wait is he a raver dang it feels better than heidi one <laughs> I can't, do any, I can't do any shuffling. Today we are trying to work out at Lifetime Fitness, one of the most commercial gyms out there. There's a ton of people here. It's like 8, 15 p.m. And we have this idea of what we want to film. Huge shout out to Rob Lipset because I saw one of his videos last week and I sort of drew this inspiration from him because I saw him do it. He essentially recorded like normal speed workouts and also like slowed the footage down for slow motion. But instead of doing a workout edit, he was doing a commentary, like a voiceover and instructional stuff. So that's what we're gonna try to do today. I'm gonna link Rob's video down below. Um, but if we can't do that with Nubil's big camera, which We'll see what the chances are. We always have plan B, so enjoy. What's going on guys? Welcome to the commentary. Today I'm gonna take you through my pull workout, but the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and screenshot the workout on the screen right now. Save it, try it out later this week. And the second thing I want you to do, if you haven't yet, please, please, please go give the video a thumbs up. Just hit that like button. I would appreciate it and be able to appreciate it. And overall, it just really helps the channel grow and be seen. So now that that's done, we're gonna hop into this workout. We start off the workout with a simple incline walk. I set the incline on the treadmill up to level 10 and the speed was at 3.5. Whenever you guys are warming up with whatever machine, cardio, or whatever you choose to do, be sure you actually try to get your heart rate up. Don't half-ass it get your blood flowing, take that time to focus and get mentally prepared for your session, kind of plan out what you're going to do, how you're going to execute. And I guarantee you it's going to help you out. The first movement that we did was an individual grip lat pull down. I'm calling this individual grip because as you can see, we have two separate handles and they're actually in a neutral position. So when you're doing like a pull down or pull up or anything, you have like a chin up, which is underhand. You have a neutral grip and then you have a overhand. Now, it's been shown that overhand and neutral are a little bit more beneficial for directly targeting the lats versus a chin-up. For Listen to that, directly targeting the lats. A chin-up is an amazing, amazing movement. It does involve a little bit more bicep. Um, so for me, I was purposely trying to target my lats directly. The cable's really nice, individual ones, because you can actually pull very, very low. I think you can actually pull a little bit, I can pull a little bit lower than I could if I was doing like a overhand, um, just because they're individual and you can kind of go a little bit deeper and get a little bit deeper of a contraction. So I recommend trying out this movement if you've ever, if you never have, or maybe if you've been doing an overhand, just try this, um, just some something different to change it up, slightly different variation. The second movement that we did was a chest supported row. Here, I put my chest on the bench, arch my lower back and poke my butt out. Now, as I row, I'm trying to drive my elbow back as far as possible and get a full contraction on my back. So when you're coming back down with the weight, after you've already brought your elbow back, you've squeezed, you're coming forward. I actually let my scapula release, but it's controlled. It's a controlled release. So I can actually stretch my lat as far as I can go. And after I have that full stretch, so my, you can see my back is almost like, it's the opposite of being pulled back. It's, it's stretched out, stretched out. Then I actually retract my scapula again, and then I begin the movement once again. So it's almost, you get tight, you pull back, squeeze as hard as you can, in, control, in a controlled motion, come down and actually stretch. And after you get that full stretch, you reset into a tight position and row again. 
And now we moved on to our third movement, which was the penley row. Now in this movement, we want to put our feet about shoulder width apart and we want to do an over, well, I did an overhand grip placement using my thumb over the bar. You could do underhand if you wanted to. You want to have a slight bend in your knee. You want your back and your neck to remain neutral. And I like to try to get as close to parallel to the floor as possible. Obviously it's gonna be impossible to be have your torso completely parallel. So there's a slight angle there, but you're essentially doing a reset every single rep. Shooting for eight to 10 reps, you're resetting every single time. So once you get in position, your chest is up, your head's neutral, you wanna yank the weight off the floor and try to drive your elbows back as far as you can in an explosive manner. So this is a super explosive movement and it's really nice because you're literally resetting every time. So after you explode up, the weight comes down and then you take a big breath get tight. I like to kind of bend my knees again, get in position and get really tight, keep my abs tight and then pull up again. And uh, just trying to be as explosive as possible. So this movement's going to really take a lot out of you. It's going to, you're going to be winded like crazy if you're doing sets of eight to 12 and it's pretty challenging. Um, so that is a penley row. Next movement, we moved on to a hoist cable curl. Uh, hoist just means that's like the specific type of machine here. You could do any sort of cable curl that you want. Uh, I chose to do this one because I really enjoy keeping my wrist supinated or my palm supinated. And so a lot of times when we're doing curls, we just kind of supinate right we have our palms facing up and we curl up but one tip i want to give you guys here is if you actually slightly twist your pinky outwards more so if you fully supinate that's where your bicep is fully flexed and so for this movement i actually try to keep my pinky slightly turned outwards the entire range of motion all the way up my pinky stays in the same spot it's not like in a neutral spot but slightly twisted out and all the way down I'm twisted out once again. Uh, now that's just gonna, again, put a little bit more stress on the bicep. You're in a, in a slightly more flexed position than when you're just supinated because that little twist, that little, little twist when you twist your pinky actually does make the contraction more intense. Uh, tip number two, you can see at the bottom of the movement, I actually give my tricep like a little slight flex every single time. And all it does is ensure that you have a full range of motion on the movement and that's like your cue. Okay, that's the end of the movement. Now let's restart another rep. Um, tricep flex, you want to keep your pinky out and my third tip would just be I see a lot of people curling um, with barbells with dumbbells any sort of curl you want to be sure that on the way down like that last right before you flex that tricep that last 10 to 20 percent of the motion don't kind of let the weight just fall down right there you want to control the weight in a slow controlled manner on the eccentric all the way down and literally be able to flex your tricep very smoothly um, don't drop the weight on the last 15 20 percent of the motion that could easily tear your bicep um, or just cause some pain next movement we did a reverse curl with the easy bar i'm going to put a picture on the screen right now showing you the brachialis and also brachioradialis uh, these are two muscles we kind of hear them a lot and i feel like a lot of people get confused myself included with which one is which but essentially the brachialis is in between your uh your biceps, your, your short head, your long head, and your brachioradialis is actually in kind of into your forearm. So anytime you're doing something that is pronated with your palms facing down, uh, that's gonna really target both of those muscles, which I recommend doing. Uh, also, in, if you do something in a neutral grip, say like a hammer curl, that's another great way to target the muscles as well. Um, personally, when I did the easy curl, I try to keep my thumbs over the bar and that just, it makes you do a little bit less weight than if you had your thumb under, but it allows you to just really focus on those exact muscle. And of course, you're, you're not just working the brachialis, you're working your entire biceps, but you can actually emphasize a little bit more stress onto those two muscles um, by doing pronated and neutral grip movement. After two bicep movements, we actually moved on to a lat pull down. Now you guys heard me say that a neutral grip and then a overhand grip are slightly more beneficial for directly targeting the lats than an underhand. And so here I normally measure shoulder width and I'll come about two inches out, outside of shoulder width, put my thumbs over the bar and really just try to bring the weight down as much as possible, bring my elbows down and slightly poke my head through uh, just like when I was doing the individual grip lat pull down. My next movement was a barbell shrug. And the main cue that I like to think about here is trying to bring my shoulder up and back at the same time in one fluid motion. You don't wanna roll back and come up, but you wanna just simply go straight up and back at the same time. I like to try to think of making my front delt touch the back of my ear. And I try to get a full stretch at the bottom, come up, squeeze, hold for a second without arching my neck too much. So I wanna keep my head fairly neutral. Next movement, we have a rear delt pec fly. Uh, I got on the pec deck machine and retracted my scapula, placed my chest on the bench, arched my back, put my butt out and kept my head neutral. Now for grip, kind of placement and height, I go ahead and measure right at chest level. And you can see I'm not trying to grip the bar or the, the pec deck hard at all. I literally have my hands open and I'm trying to utilize, I'm trying to let my rear delt pull the weight back, not my traps. So use a weight light enough to, to be able to properly activate the rear delt. 
And that's our main tip for this movement. For the final motion, we actually did a dumbbell alternating curl. Now, I did 45 pounds here, and so that's pretty heavy for me. Uh, that kind of puts me like in the six to eight range, especially at the very end of my workout. But what I wanted to show you guys today is how I actually, one, supinate the pinky and twist outwards. So you start in a neutral position, come up, twist the pinky out so you can get that full contraction. Um, but number two, when the weight gets really heavy on my final sets, you'll see a little bit of a sway. So I'm allowing my body to come, my torso to come a little bit forward just so I can get some, a little bit momentum to bring the weight up. And once I come up, my torso is coming up. So I'm leaning forward, I'm coming up. I'm not allowing my body to actually break perpendicular to the floor. So if my body's in a straight line, I'll swing my torso just a little bit forward, help get the weight up. But if it's, if it's too heavy to where I have to actually lean back and break perpendicular to my back, then I'm, I need to drop weight. So pick a weight that you can do. And on the last, say, one to two sets, try to get a few, I'm gonna call them like swinging reps. Um, but when you do the swing, don't put yourself at jeopardy. Don't injure yourself. Do it in a controlled manner and don't be scared to drop the weight. But I think that just those last few reps are freaking killer. Control the weight down. Again, on that last 15, 20% at the very bottom, don't give out. Control it all the way to where, to where you can flex the tricep. And that is the workout. So hopefully you all enjoyed it. Enjoy the rest of the vlog. We are at Walmart because your boy's dedicated and I wanted to pick up a skill for Heidi's place because she doesn't have one. So I can't miss my weigh-ins. I don't know which one. Uh, this, one like, this one looks silver. I like this. Yeah, this one, yeah. Teach me. I spent a lot of time at HEB and I've honestly spent like 10 minutes here at Walmart looking for like a low carb pizza crust. I really want to make some healthy pizza. Well, lower macro pizza, uh, but I can't find any like base. I can't find a bread. I already have the fat-free cheese, turkey, pepperonis, uh, you know, you can put some bell peppers and some onion and maybe some pineapple on top if you're, if you like pineapple on your pizza, but I can't find a good base. So comment down below if you guys know where to find one. I used to get these like flat out breads, but I can't find them anywhere. Uh, this was a few years ago, so help a brother out. So to finish off the macros, I'm gonna have six egg whites, about six egg whites, and then roughly four ounces of this oven roast turkey breast to put me right at my goal of about 200 grams of protein per day. So it's about 11.30 p.m. I normally don't eat this late, but gotta finish the macros. I would actually recommend you guys try, I talked about this in the last video, try to finish your food roughly around the same time every day just so you can have more consistent weigh-ins um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Doesn't matter if you stop eating 8 p.m., 10 p.m., midnight, 2 a.m., just be consistent with it so you can accurately adjust your macros. So we'll see you guys in the morning. This scale is wrong. Let me tell you. I started this prep at 187, and that scale, three to four times getting on it, said I was 189. There's no possible way I'm 189 pounds right now, over three weeks in a prep. I don't feel bloated. I feel pretty freaking lean. Definitely leaner than I was, and no freaking way. I think today would have been a new way in, honestly, because I feel really light. I'm not going to believe it. I'm not going to believe it. It's okay. I know I, I, I want to go get a scale, and I just explain the importance of weighing yourself every day. But you know what? I'd rather not weigh myself while I'm here in San Antonio for a few days, or just go get a different scale, than have it, like, mess with me in the head. I can't believe I'm so fat. All the progress that I've made in the last 23 days, just down the drain, just like that. I'm just like, curious, like, what do I actually weigh? I really want to eat? Maybe gravity is different here in San Antonio. I can't go off my oh. San Antonio reputation will have to be in Houston. Or maybe I'm just bad. And I've gained weight this whole prep and I haven't even been eating bad for three plus weeks. That could be. All right, guys, all jokes aside, the main topic of this video is actually to be about cheat meals and refeeds. So there's a ton of information out there on these topics. I've gathered it all. I've condensed it all. I've summarized it into like as little as possible so I can just give it to you guys in a simple manner. I truly believe this is the easiest sort of drawn out way you're gonna see it online, or at least that's my hope. So sit back, take some notes, and I really think a lot of you guys can benefit from this. So before jumping into refeeds and cheat meals, I need to talk about three things. Number one is metabolism. Number two, leptin. Number three is glycogen. Two things about metabolism. Number one, Everyone's metabolism is different. They are very unique to each individual person. Number two, this is super important, metabolisms can adapt over time. So here we have our graph. We're gonna use the same graph for all three of these things, right? And metabolism is purple. We start here at the beginning of our diet. 
We used to have nine, so I broke 90 days here because this is like summer shredding, but many of us are dieting for longer than that. So over time, as we're in during a fat loss phase, we're in a caloric deficit, we're losing body weight. Naturally, it's gonna start doing this, right? Like this, like this. Kind of going down a little bit. The longer you diet, the slower it's gonna get. That's really all I need you guys to know for now. Number two, leptin. Leptin is a hormone released from your fat cells and essentially it helps keep your body comfortable. So for me, I kind of like, if I'm nine, 10 months into a bulk and I'm just eating whatever I want, whenever I want, I kind of hover around 182 to 185 pounds. But for me to like actually get past that, I really have to eat a lot. I have to make myself almost sick every night, like eating so much. And likewise, if I'm dieting down, my body likes to keep me between like 175 and 185 I would say uh, but like to get under 175 under 170 to dive into like a competition prep like 167 168 it's really difficult for me my body really fights me so that fight that opponent that you're fighting is leptin in short uh, the second thing that it does as the leptin levels decrease so leptin decreases as your diet goes on so your diet's going on here's leptin it's decreasing like this like this like this like this as that decreases, your hunger and your cravings are gonna go up, okay? Now, last thing I wanna talk about is glycogen. Essentially, glycogen equals carb storage. Now, think of a sponge, okay? Our bicep is a sponge. At the end of a bulk, we're in a surplus, we're full, we're all filled up, filled up, filled up. As we diet, again, our glycogen is going down, down, down. What happens when this goes down? We feel really flat, we look really flat, we start feeling weak. Now I'm gonna race this and talk about refeeds and cheat meals. Here we go. Why do we need refeed days and cheat meals? You see, it's underlined. That means why do we need refeed days and cheat meals? Scientifically speaking, right, to spike metabolism, leptin, and glycogen. So we're dieting for a long time and we wanna see spikes, right? Now, everyone's like, oh yeah, I get to have a refeed or cheat meal like every weekend, right? But here's the thing, scientifically speaking, again, most individuals really don't need these spikes that often, and most of these individuals are not lean enough and they've not been dieting for long enough to actually benefit from these spikes. These spikes are not like massive, massive, they're very minute, right? So here's our thing. So I'm gonna combine metabolism, leptin, and glycogen all in the green marker. So we're, we're starting fresh, right? Here I have day 45, day 90, day 135, 180. So we have a 24 week cut right here, okay? We're coming down. Now maybe here we might want like a little spike in here, like maybe like one and like two and like here and here. Then you see the spikes are getting more frequent the longer we're dieting and the more shredded we're getting. Okay, so the leaner you are, the longer you're dieting, you may need refeeds and or cheat meal more often than if you're like the first one, two, three, four weeks, you're really not in need of anything yet. These levels have not depleted yet. They take a while to come down. It's literally been like hours we've been filming this. So if you're still watching right now, just do me a favor and go give me these ones up. We really appreciate it. We're burning the midnight. It's already dark outside. We started this at like 4.30. Okay, next thing we can talk about. What is the difference between cheat meals and refeeds? In short, typically if I were to have a cheat meal or if someone has a cheat meal, the mentality is, all right, you want know on Saturday, I'm gonna go and to this burger spot, I'm gonna get this big burger, a large fry, extra large fry, give me a, give me a soda and, or give me a milkshake. I'm gonna go all out for one meal. I'm not really gonna track it, I'm just gonna enjoy myself. And typically you have no boundaries for yourself. You have these meals that are typically really high in fat. And the issue with this is that you can't really control this. You're not tracking it. This is not manipulated. You can't use this for a benefit, right? And so I really do not like or recommend using cheat meals. Now with that said, guys, here's something really important. We're all human. We all have weak spots. We all maybe give in like once this prep, maybe twice. And if you happen to give in and mess up, don't stress it too much. Don't try to overcompensate this next day with like three hours of cardio. Don't try to minimize your food the next day because you messed up. Just simply get back on track, get your cardio going, hit your macros, and don't worry about it too much. Kind of pretend in your head like that it was a refeed and maybe push your next refeed farther back and actually try to plan it out, okay? So don't beat yourself up too much. But the refeed is the way to go. It's controlled. You're actually manipulating your macros and increasing your carbs not your, and actually lowering your fat a little bit and keeping your protein a little bit low. That way you can actually spike your leptin and spike your, uh, or increase the levels of glycogen, which carbs are what spike those levels. Fat does not spike those levels. That's the main kind of key point here. Uh, obviously you can, you can track this, you can take data from it, and you can actually benefit from this in the long run. So 
With all that said, the main benefit of a refeed and even a cheat meal is psychological health, guys. If you're dieting for weeks, you're starting to feel like crap, you're starting to really crave things, you're building a bad association with food, it's natural. And like for a lot of people, if you know I'm, ha if you know you're having a refeed in three, four days, it's gonna be like you'll be less likely to go out and just binge. And God forbid, like instead of a cheat meal, if you want a whole cheat day, you're just stuffing your face all day and making, a, you're losing a lot of your progress that you had made. Psychological health. A lot of people feel better after refeeds. Even like on the day of a refeed, your mood is increased, uh, your gym performance is increased. The day after a refeed, you may perform super well in the gym. You feel stronger. You feel really good. That's the point of this. And like that outweighs this little like spike over here. The health like and the mood and everything that increases is the number one reason I recommend you guys incorporate these in your diet um, and fat loss journey. So when should you refeed? Three examples. Number one, when you start feeling like crap. So you've been going to the gym two, three days in a row, you feel like crap, you have no strength, you're kind of lightheaded, you feel kind of dizzy, really out of it. That is a the number one sign. This is like the number one reason you should start to re or think about refeeding. Number two, if you're dropping weight too quickly, uh, if you're losing more than two pounds a week, you may want to refeed or you may want to actually just adjust your macros and increase them a little bit. Uh, number three, if you're actually trying to diet down right and you're stuck, you know, you're weighing yourself every day, you're doing everything right and you're not dropping, you're tracking your macros every day, it may be time to refeed, increase the carbs and that can hopefully give you a spike to continue going down and continue making progress. So now, after, now this is all done, I'm gonna give you the secret formula to actually properly do a refeed. All right, so how often should you refeed? My number one tip and guideline is feel it out, guys. Whenever you feel like your body needs one, you've been having those bad days back to back to back, go ahead and give yourself a refeed. A very general rule of thumb for people that have been dieting for a long time, maybe every 10 days or so, 10 to 14 days, uh, leaner individuals that have been dieting for a longer time, people that have been dieting 20, 24 weeks are really close to stage ready, you may want to repeat a little bit more frequently. Now, here's the secret formula, here's the secret sauce. All right, I'm gonna put it, come up here and do it kind of like this way. Here we have P, F, and C, protein, fat, carb. For protein, we're gonna take our body weight in pounds, multiply it times 0.75, all the way to one gram per pound of body weight. For fat, we're gonna go body weight times 0.28. Now, if you guys watched the macro video, my typical recommendation for fat is 0.3 to 0.4 but we're actually dropping that down a little bit for refeed day. Just like on protein, we're actually gonna drop down a little bit on refeed day so we can allow a little bit more calorie um, space, if you wanna call it, for our carbs to increase. Now, for our carbs, we're gonna take our body weight and we have a range of 1.5 all the way to 2.8. So what you guys are gonna have to do, you're gonna have to pick a number, let's say you pick 2.0. So body weight times 2.0. You go ahead and refeed, so you can go ahead and refeed and you really have to see how your body responds. If you step on the scale the next day after the refeed, it's, you're probably gonna be a little bit spiked up. Um, but if it takes you more than two or so days to kind of get back to where you were, to start seeing those like consistent weigh-ins, you may have picked a number that's too high. So allow yourself about two days to get back on track to kind of like recover from a refeed. And that should be like the good sort of amount. Typically 2.2, 2.3 is a nice number for most individuals. And that's really it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, found it useful. Give it a thumbs up. We'll see you in the next one. Mm. This is so fun. Is the mic on? Yeah. So you're not going to waste. <laughs>